Hello everyone. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani. You are lecturer in management accounting. Welcome to lesson three of standard costing. Now lesson three uh, focuses on variances and this time uh, computations. Now our first question comes from uh, September 2015, question two, part B. September 2015, question two, part B. The question reads that a limited company operates a system of standard costing. The following information is available for the month of July 2015. Number one, actual cost data in shillings, direct material purchased 36,000 kgs, total 1890,000, direct wages 6,800 hours, total 2,000, 2,000,000, Variable production overheads total uh, 620,000. Fixed production overheads total 1,880,000. Number two, output during the period was 3,500 uh, units of product Y. Number three, the standard production units were budgeted at 4,800. Uh, units number six number four the standard cost data per unit is as follows direct material purchased shillings 500 per kg total shillings 500 direct wages two hours uh, total 600 shillings variable production overheads 200 shillings fixed production overheads 400 shillings total 1700 then you have number five labor records show 6200 hours we are worked 6000 no 600 hours we are recorded as idle time due to the machine breakdown required roman one direct material cost price and usage variance Number two, labor cost, labor rate, labor efficiency, and idle time variance. Number three, variable overhead uh, cost variance. And number four is fixed overhead expenditure variance. End of question. Now, the question has asked us about the materials, about the labor, but for the variable and fixed, they have asked us only uh, one one. But we are going to use this question as, as, um, as a sample question or either as an illustration for us to do all the variances that we have done and we have uh, I've given you the structure in uh, lesson three. Now, uh, the starting point is actually to complete this standard cost card that has been given just before uh, note number five. So note number four, you've been given the a card which is not complete because you're given the materials uh, uh, shillings per kg no number of kgs wages hours no price package per hour the same case with the variable and fixed so we can have it this way this is um uh, this is september 2015 question two part b we have uh, the standard cost card so we have uh, direct materials we have been given shillings 500 per kg and the amount here is shillings 500 that means if we are if we are if we are using or we are spending 500 per one unit of output and one kg is actually 500 shillings that can only mean that we are using one kg. That's something to note. We must be using one kg for us to have the cost of 500. This is a uh, direct materials. We must be using one kg so that now every is 500 to get total of uh, the 500 shillings. Then we come to the direct labor or wages. 
we are incurring a total of 600 and you have been given uh, some two hours. This is two hours. We must be spending 300 shillings per hour for us to, gi to get 600 uh, shillings. Then we come to the variable overheads, variable production overheads and fixed production overheads. We must be using the same, same number of hours, uh, assuming that they are absorbed uh, into production per hour. So this is a two hours, just like labor, two hours. Then the rate we need, so that now we can have total. Total provided there is for the variable is a 200 shillings. For the fixed is 400 shillings, meaning the rate per hour, like for the variable, we just need to divide. We get uh, some 100 shillings. We divide this, we get 200 shillings. So that now total here comes to the way given there as 1,700. Now that tells you that uh, we have completed our cost card. This is what we call standard cost card. Now it's complete in terms of the usage of the inputs, their specific prices per those inputs, and total cost for the final product. That is uh, the starting point. Now having done that, because some questions can give you this, just proceed. But for this one, we had to start from here that we can be able to have good basis. Now let's start with um, the first variance. Let's start with the material variances first. Material variances. Now remember, we are using this question as our um, illustration. So irrespective of what has been asked there, if you are to answer uh, as per the structure I've, I gave you in lesson three, two, then the first variance, we can have it as the material cost variance, which I gave as the standard quantity multiplied by standard uh, price minus the actual quantity multiplied by the actual price. Now, we do not have the standard quantity because I told you that you must calculate the standard quantity this way. So you can say where the standard quantity is given by the uh, usage per unit multiplied by the actual production. It is as per the budget. You are to use how many kgs per unit. Then for this actual production, how many kgs would you have used? So you say that uh, as per the budget, we were to use happier one kg. One unit was to use one kg. So if we say one kg here, we multiply our actual production. Actual production has been given in um, note number two. Note number two. And uh, I suspect um, uh, note number two has been given, we have been given there 3,500. During the, number two, output during the period was 3,500. So 3,500 here. So this is total of 3,500 kgs. That's all. Now, meaning that uh, the standard quantity that you should have used for the actual units of 3,500 should be 3,500 kgs. Then now we come and substitute here. We see that, um, therefore, MCV equals to 3,500 each at the, act the standard price has already been given. You have done here. Per kg is 500 shillings minus the actual Quanti the actual material, remember the actual quantity times actual price means the actual material cost, which you have been given in note number one. Actual material purchased in total is 1,890,000. So we require to compare what we should have spent and what we spent. That if we multiply 3,500 times 500, this is 1,750,000. Minus 1,890,000. We have overspent by how much? So minus 1890,000. We have overspent by shillings 140,000. This one is adverse variance. Adverse variance. That we have spent more by 140. And what we, and we want to explain under what we call the variance analysis, it is this 140. 
Using the structure I gave, we explain using the price and the usage. So we come to number two, we have the material price variance, which is given as actual quantity in bracket, actual uh, standard price minus actual price because it's about the difference between the prices that are we uh, we have uh, uh, incurred and what we should have incurred now the actual quantity given first of all uh, in note number one we are given direct material purchased of 36,000 kgs uh, that's one i suspect and of course there is a mistake there it should not be that 6,000 kgs should be that 600 as you compare with an, even with the standard it is 3,500 for the standard for the actual should be around that figure so it cannot be that 6,000 so therefore there's a mistake there is an, there's just an, an, an error of a, a one zero added so it should be 3,600 eh? so this is 3,600 kgs so just make a correction there then the standard price is what we have spent here or 500 shillings as in what we should have spent minus what we spent it is not provided exactly but we need to divide should we take the actual material cost of 1000 890000 divide by the actual number of units used not the 6000 given but the 600 because of that error that tells you the cost should be 525 so that means we have spent 25 shillings over and above 25 times that 600 this is giving us 90000 90000 adverse meaning out of 140 what is cost by the price difference is only 90,000. The balance of 50 must be explained by the other variance called Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House 3rd floor, opposite fire station.